It may sound a little crazy, but I believe if you hear me out, you might be encouraged today. But besides that, it's probably not the craziest thing that you're going to hear this day and age in this world that sometimes I think might be really crazy. But you know, imagine if there was something inside of you. Let's say that God had placed inside of you, but maybe you don't realize that he has just yet. So it's kind of there, but it's not alive. It's dormant right now. But let's say what's dormant inside of you meets what's alive inside of me. But see, what is alive inside of me used to also be dormant or not alive. But something happened along the line and life was breathed into the thing that was inside of me that I didn't even know that was there. And now all of a sudden when what's dormant inside of you connects with what's alive inside of me, then the dormant thing inside of you comes to life. <laughs> you know, it may sound crazy, but hear me out. Because this is very scriptural. And you know, the Bible even mentions that we should encourage one another. Really, you know, that's really breathing life into each other. And sometimes we discovered that there was something inside of us that had been there all along that all of a sudden comes to life inside of us. And it's exciting. But there's an Old Testament scripture that I really like. There's only two verses. I really wished I knew more to the story. But it's in 2 Kings chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. It says this, Elisha died and he was buried. <laughs> That's not exactly an encouraging verse, is it? But it says, now Moabite raiders used to enter that country during the spring. Well, once while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of those raiders. So they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. They just, they were like, okay, they were kind of a little bit scared, right? They're like, let's get rid of this dead weight, if you will, throw it in a tomb. It just happened to be Elisha's tomb, all right? And so when the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. <laughs> Could you imagine this? When they come back to put his body in the proper place, that they kind of maybe like, it's like they open the door, you know, kind of deal. And they're like, he's like, what's up? <laughs> Like, did they have some more funerals after that? Because, you know, they would have been like, what in the world? But I mean, how do you explain all those things? And when he goes back to his family and people in the community see him, I mean, you know, like this is incredible to think through all the things that could happen in the story. But you know, the most powerful thing in the story is the fact that Elisha had been gone long enough that it was his bones and that there was still enough life in those bones to help resurrect what was dormant that was laid beside them. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. And so it really makes me appreciate the fact that Jesus didn't just come so that we can have a ticket to go to heaven and spend eternity with him. That's amazing. But he comes so that we can have life. <laughs> you understand that John 10, 10, he says that I have come so that you can have life and you can have it more abundantly. You see, I was that man that they threw in that tomb that everybody had given up on. And, and you probably understand that as well. And then all of a sudden, when you got tossed into something, then all of a sudden you come up against Christ. And then all of a sudden, everything that was in you that was no hope, all of a sudden now comes to life. And it's not dormant anymore. And it's incredible to think through and now that as a believer in Christ, that he lives in me, that resurrection life lives in me and every believer, then we have that kind of life in us. And that when somebody comes along in our life, that they're dormant, that they're just, you know, winding their way through life, then all of a sudden they get connected to something. And then after it's all said and done, we're kind of like the blind man in the Gospels that Jesus healed and everybody, Pharisees were fussing and they were trying to figure everything out. And finally he was like, hey, lo, listen to this. I could tell you one thing. I used to not be able to see. I used to be blind and now I can. You see, I can't figure it all out. But there's something really special that goes on inside the life of a believer of Christ that brings life to the lifeless and to the hopeless. Be encouraged today. Love you guys.